Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to our VIP Raptor tour. Uh, my name is Emily Watts, I am the Discovery Center Director and here I have with me my assistant Clementine. She is our lead intern for the Raptor Care Program and she's going to be learning how to handle the Raptors as well. But I'm gonna bring out our first bird and then we're gonna learn a little bit about her, okay? So I'm gonna be bringing out Celerity, who is our peregrine falcon. Okay, um, what's right? Celerity. And that was the hard part. <laughs> All right, here she is, our special guest star, Celerity. Okay, so she is our peregrine falcon, uh, which is a type of raptor. All four of the raptors that we have here at the Discovery Center have some form of injury that prevents them from being able to survive in the wild. So Celerity was, she came from the wild, she grew up in the wild, so we don't know how old she is. But she was found with a broken right wing, and when she was brought to a veterinarian and a rehabilitator, that right wing never quite healed properly. So the tendons and ligaments aren't, you know, what they should be for her to be able to fly strong enough to hunt. So Celerity, because she cannot hunt, she cannot survive in the wild, which is why she's here in captivity with us. And when we talk about and meet all of our birds, you know, we'll talk about all of their individual injuries and everything. But first I want to talk to you guys about what makes her a raptor. So when I say the word raptor, I'm referring to birds of prey. So that's hawks, eagles, falcons, owls, and even vultures are considered raptors. So there are three things that make this bird a raptor. The first have to do with her diet. Um, so all raptors are carnivores, so they will only ever eat meat. If you see them at your bird feeder, it's because they're eating the birds, not the seeds. <laughs> The second thing that makes her a raptor is her talons. So all raptors have sharp talons and very strong feet. And the third thing that makes her a raptor is this beak. She has a very sharp hooked beak that she uses to tear apart her food into small enough pieces to swallow whole. That is because raptors don't have teeth like we do. That would weigh them down. So speaking of weight, raptors have hollow bones like most birds do. Oh, she's fluffing up for you guys. That's very pretty. That is. Yes, and other adaptations that make them super light. One of those adaptations is that raptors don't have a bladder, so she might have to do something during this presentation, and I'm going to apologize in advance for all four birds, because we can't exactly potty train them. Yes, so Celerity is a peregrine falcon. She is the largest falcon species here in San Diego. They are very common here in San Diego. In fact, about 50 years ago, there were no peregrine falcons in San Diego County at all because they were almost um, made extinct by this chemical called DDT, uh, yeah. which was a pesticide that was used for a long time before a scientist realized that it caused birds to be unable to produce calcium. Therefore, when they laid their eggs, their eggs were very weak and were very easy to break. So when the mother bird would try and turn the eggs or move around in the nest, it would, they would break. Um, so that's why peregrine falcons almost went extinct. However, in 1972, when the Endangered Species Act was created, peregrine falcons were added to that list and they were protected. Additionally, DDT was banned and hasn't been used in the United States since. So peregrine falcons have been able to recover and their population is now what it was before the use of DDT. Here in San Diego, you can see lots of peregrine falcons. Uh, peregrines typically like to live near a source of water because there's a lot of food there for them. Uh, we see peregrine falcons flying around the Discovery Center occasionally. I saw two of them flying around on Wednesday and then one sitting up on the power tower on Thursday. So this has been a big week for the Discovery Center. Very exciting. Uh, but peregrine falcons, they are specialists, which means that they specialize in eating only one type of food. And that type of food is other birds. So I think Solarity mentioned that her name means speed. That is because peregrine falcons are the fastest animals on earth. They fly up high in the sky above all the other birds. And then when they see a bird that they want to eat, they fold their wings in and, and they form their body into about a teardrop shape. 
and dive down. So that dive, which we call a stoop, peregrine falcons can reach up to 250 miles per hour and they grab their prey with their talons and almost always kill them upon impact because so they are so fast. They're the fastest animal in the world. That's in the, the world. Fastest, fastest bird. Not the fastest the fastest bird. Be fastest animal. animal. Yep, faster than cheetahs, faster right. than swordfish, faster than sharks, wow. all that. Got yes. It. And when I'm talking to little kids, I say she's faster than a race car, which really blows their minds, you know? Yes, yes. so peregrine falcons are incredibly fast. Uh, one of their favorite things to eat are ducks and other shorebirds, which is why you'll find them near a source of water, like our lagoon here. You can also find there's a breeding pair of peregrine falcons in near Black's Beach in La Jolla, and they nest up on the cliffs there. So falcons don't build their own nests, some falcons will steal a nest from a hawk or another bird that will build a nest. Uh, but peregrine falcons specifically like to nest on ledges. So if you're ever climbing a mountain and you see a little egg sitting on a ledge, you know, it's not misplaced. It's probably a peregrine falcon nest. They just don't take much care to build it. Do they photograph the uh, falcons nesting? Yes. Um, and yep. there's a site? Um, I'm not sure, you know, I've heard a lot of accounts of them being spotted in La Jolla and a lot of local photographers, just people doing it on their own, but I don't know if there's a specific website dedicated to it. So. I think Marie's asking, in some cases they have like people came up and take care yes. and stuff, but yeah. you can actually see the whole process. Absolutely, so I don't know of anything like that here in San Diego, actually, but that would be super cool. We have um, webcams on our birds. Yeah where we, uh, we record them, it's security cameras, where we have footage going all the time. And we've seen uh, our great horned owl, who you'll meet in a little bit, he gets visited by a wild great horned owl at night, which is super cool. So all four of the birds we have here are native. Uh, we see peregrines flying around, we see kestrels flying around. We know there's a great horned owl around here somewhere, but they're only out at night. And our little western screech owl, they would be found more in a forest area, so they don't live right here in Carlsbad, but they are found in San Diego. All right, so that's a little bit about our peregrine falcon celerity. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring her inside to her habitat so she can have her dinner. And she deserves a treat because she's been such a good girl. And she is on high alert right now. Like I said, she's a wild bird, so she's constantly on the lookout. Uh, yeah, there's no telling what she's seeing. I mean, their eyesight is eight times better than ours. So she can see birds that we couldn't see without binoculars. And so yeah. what bird are going to be? Oh, you're about to find out. Isn't that exciting? Uh, before I put Celerity back, um, would you guys like to take a picture with her? Because we get to pick one of the four birds or all four of the birds or two of them to take a picture with. Um, so before I put her back home, do we want a picture with Celerity? Alrighty, yeah. so just make sure that you maintain one foot of distance from Celerity, okay? And then Clementine can take the picture on whatever phone you like. How do we, uh, how can you distinguish between the male and the female? So for these guys, the only difference between the male and the female, and this goes for all raptors, is their size. So the females are always going to be significantly larger than the males, up to 50% larger. So Celerity, when she was found in the wild, the only way that we could determine her sex, other than doing you know, DNA testing, which isn't really necessary, is by her weight. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> um, so based on her weight, uh, she falls within the parameters of a female. However, she could be you know, just a really big male. And there's you know, no way of us being 100% sure without uh -huh. testing her DNA, but that's just not really necessary right. for our purposes. Right. And maybe she laid an egg. Yes, so these guys, unlike chickens, they don't lay eggs. Yes, they don't lay unfertile eggs. So only chickens. Oh yeah, I mean, there's lots of eligible bachelors flying around all the time. Sometimes I see her checking them out, but yeah. Alrighty, do we want to get a picture with her? Yeah. Um, I can. I can come right over. You know, let's do this. Alrighty, and Clementine, let's take a couple because. She just got yeah. it. So. All right. One, two, three, cheese. Cheese. All right. We took a few. Yeah, she wasn't really looking. I think she was looking yeah. in one. Okay. So she was All right. So I did a presentation a couple days ago. Oh, my goodness. She worked here as well? I won't. I did a presentation a couple days ago with our preschool class, and I told them that she's the fastest animal on earth. And they all said, no, I'm faster. <laughs>
prove it? And then they were asking me, is she faster? Because I said she's faster than a race car. They said, is she faster than an airplane? I was like, well, no, but she's still really fast. <laughs> These are one of the few um, raptor species where they've been able to get uh, data on their speed because you can tra uh, put a GPS tracker on their body because they're so big. You can yeah. strap it to them. Um, and what they did was actually somebody, oh, here she goes. A falconer went skydiving with one of his peregrine falcons next to him, and they measured the speed that way. A yes, while she, skydiving. Yes, with yes. his peregrine falcon, and she was diving down to catch a bird to catch prey in that stoop, that teardrop maneuver that I was talking about. Oh, almost done, baby. Almost done. Okay, here we go. There we go. Alrighty. So her food um, is chicken, but not like what we get at KFC. <laughs> she has some little frozen day-old chicks in here that she'll come down and eat. And we have to feed them whole because that's the only way that they'll get all the nutrients that they need. He is an American kestrel. This is the smallest falcon species in San Diego. So here at the Discovery Center we have the largest and we have the smallest. And he is also the most common falcon species here in San Diego. If you know what you're looking for, which now you do, uh, you'll be seeing these guys just about every day when you're out hiking, driving, walking around. Are they, are they so, the ones that flap and, like, stay still the yes, air? yes, hovering is definitely a um, distinctive trait of these guys that not many other birds of this size and shape will do. So if you see them hovering, then it's almost definitely an American kestrel. Another thing that they do is bob their tail. I don't know if that's the wind or him doing it, but they'll, when they land on a branch or on a fence, they'll bob their tail up and down a couple times. Um, and that's something that's also distinctive of the American kestrel. So he's wearing his hood right now because he was in his little box, but I'm gonna go ahead and take his hood off. Um, and let's see that cute face. There he is. <laughs> Isn't he the cutest? So yes, this is our American kestrel. He is a male. And these are one of the only raptor species where you can tell the difference between a male and a female just by looking at them. So this little guy, his name is Blue. And his name is Blue because he has this nice bluish gray color on his wings and on his head. That is something that is distinctive of the male American kestrels. If he were a female, he would have this reddish brown color all over him. And he'd be a little bit larger and you see he has this black stripe at the bottom of his tail. If he were a female, he would have black stripes all up and down his tail. So American kestrels like to eat things like other birds, small rodents, lizards, snakes, bugs, just about anything that moves. And our American kestrel here at the Discovery Center, he eats mice and chickens, just like the rest of the raptors, although he gets the small mice. Yes. So he has this black stripe under his eye that is something that is distinctive of falcons. It is called a malar stripe. All falcons have some sort of black stripe under their eye to prevent glare because they rely heavily on their vision. Um, Solarity's head is almost entirely black, but she does have some form of black marking underneath her eyes. So yep, this is our daytime raptor. What is and his injury right here? So he doesn't have a physical injury. He is our only bird that doesn't have a physical injury. Uh, Blue kind of has an interesting story. It's kind of a good warning story for a lot of people also. So somebody found Blue when he was a little baby, just covered in fluff. And instead of taking him to a rehabilitator or leaving him alone, they decided to take him home as a pet. And that's obviously a terrible idea. It's like taking a coyote home as a pet. And he's super crazy. I wouldn't want him in my house. And this person quickly realized that, you know, this is not a good pet. This is a wild beast. <laughs> so they brought him to a rehabilitator, but by that time it was too late. He had already imprinted on the person. So Blue basically has never left the nest. He's never been kicked out of the nest by his parents. He's always been fed and taken care of. So if he were released into the wild, uh, first thing he would starve, he wouldn't be able to find food, and when he got really hungry, he would find the nearest person and go up to them and start squawking, which obviously isn't ideal, you know, if this guy came up to you and started squawking, that's not a good situation. 
Additionally, he wouldn't ever be able to find a mate or get along with other wild American kestrels because he doesn't make the sounds that a grown-up American kestrel should make. He makes the sounds that baby American kestrels make when they're asking their parents for food. And he also makes the alarm call, uh, which sometimes he'll be making his alarm call and I'll come outside and there's some American kestrels flying around and he just wants to go fight them. He doesn't understand what it means to be a bird, but he has a nice life here at the Discovery Center. You know, he um, he relies on us for his food. So. Do all birds imprint? Yes. They do, right, because yeah. I know before the, when we raise the condors, Right? They yeah. use their little condor. Yeah, the gloves. Gloves. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Yep. And that's what happens in a rehabilitator uh, facility when they find an injured baby bird and it can't be released to the wild. They try and raise it as hands off as distantly as possible. Uh, but for this guy, it was just too late by that point that he was brought to the rehabilitator, so he never really stood a chance. Our owl, our uh, great horned owl, who was found as a baby and brought straight to a rehabilitator. I know. He was brought straight to a rehabilitator. Um, and they just weren't doing the proper practices of trying to feed him and they were not, you know, do, taking a hands-off approach. So he's an imprint as well, but he also has a physical injury that we'll see. But Blue doesn't have any physical injuries. He is fit as a falcon and, you know, so we've just got to keep him here at the Discovery Center because that's what's best for him. So he gets to teach kids about American Pestrels and other raptors here in San Diego, but now that you know what one looks like, you'll be seeing them all over the place, everywhere. You know, you probably see them and you're like, oh, that's just a dove or a songbird because he's so tiny, but they're everywhere. And when they're flying um, up above, you can see they have that pointy wing shape. They have very pointy, narrow wings. That's something that you can look for that's common among all falcons. And um, also you can see the markings from under his tail. It's like a black and white rainbow almost. It's very beautiful. So let's let this little guy have some food. All right, it's dinner time. Again, we like two large mice, two large chicks on Sunday. She has three chicks today. Um, some days just a little bit less. Um, and then blue over here is usually one um, larger mouse or like two smaller mice. He has one chick right now. Um, and then the other owls we usually have a. Alright, my boy. So isn't he handsome? Oh gosh, yes. So this is Ku. Um, that's his name because um, he is a great horned owl and great horned owls make that typical hooting sound that we're used to, that very deep hoo that you hear in scary movies all the time. So. Who, our who, however, um, like I said, he's an imprint, so he doesn't make that typical hooting sound. He makes nice little sounds Aww. instead uh, because he, like Blue, is kind of like a baby that's never really left the nest. So he just makes baby sounds. He's not fully mature. So this is our great horned owl. Great horned owls are the largest owl species here in San Diego, and they are one of the most common, only um, competed by barn owls which are also all over the place here. So these guys are called great horned owls because they have those pretty ear tufts. Uh, and he sticks them up when he's trying to attract a mate or trying to look cool. <laughs> so great horned owls eat a variety of different things. They eat rodents up to the size of about a house cat. Um, and they are the only predators of skunks. So we love having great horned owls around. We would love to protect the great horned owls or else we'd have skunks everywhere. <laughs> so the reason that this guy doesn't really mind eating skunks is because he can't smell. So owls do not have a sense of smell. And that's because their tiny little head is filled up with all their other great senses. So in order to be a nocturnal hunter, because owls are the only raptors that are nocturnal, so they're a lot different from all the other raptor species like eagles, hawks, falcons. Um, Owls have incredible eyesight, except our owl here, I think you can see one of his eyes, he has no eyesight in his right eye, which is why he's with us, so he just showed off for you guys. But there are a couple different reasons that owls can see so well and can especially see so well at night. So one of those reasons has to do with the size of their eyes. So um, a great horned owl's eyes are actually the same size as ours. 
so, but his head is a lot smaller than ours. So if we had eyes the size of owls, our eyes would be as big as grapefruits. So we would look <laughs> ridiculous, like aliens. <laughs> but the reason that that helps them see at night is because larger eyes let in more light. Like a larger window lets in more light than a small window. And there's not very much light at night, so they have to rely on the light from the stars and the moon and street lights <laughs> to be able to see at night. Also, their eyes have a different cellular composition than ours do. So in our eyes, we have about 50% cones, which are the color-sensitive cells, and 50% rods, which are the light-sensitive cells. However, owls have almost 100% rods. So although they can't see all the pretty colors that we can see, they can see incredibly well at nighttime because their eyes are almost completely made up of those light-sensitive cells. Another thing that makes owls a little bit different from all the other raptors is that owls have soft feathers that are adapted for silent flight. So their feathers, you can see they kind of have serrated edges. You can see on the on his lower wing there, his feathers are serrated. That allows them to be able to fly in silence. So not only can they sneak up on their prey, they can also listen to where their prey is while they're trying to find them. So even though they have incredible vision, they also have to rely on their hearing. So owls um, have two ears like us, one on each side of the head. So we can hear if Clementine was talking or if I was talking over there, you'd be able to hear which side it would come from. However, owls also have one eye that, or one ear that's a little bit higher than the other one and one ear that's a little bit lower. So this allows them to tell if the sound is coming from above or below them. So with these two planes of direction, they can pinpoint exactly where a sound is coming from just by hearing it. So that allows them to hunt things that they can't even see. So that's why it's important for them to be able to hear even when they're flying through the forest at night. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and bring Hu back inside his house so we can meet our next owl friend. Do you guys have any questions about the great horned owls or this guy? He's mostly just feathers, right? He looks so big, furry. but yes. he's just a lot of fluff. He's a lot of fluff. A whole lot of fluff. And, you know, owls are the only type of raptors that have feathers on their feet. Yeah, he's very That's furry. because at nighttime, most raptor species, they tuck one of their feet in while they're sleeping, and then they tuck the other foot into their body to keep them warm. But owls can't do that. They're busy hunting and looking for a mate, and they've got a lot to do, so they don't have time to keep their feet warm that way. But yes, this guy is a lot of fluff. He would look... I think there was a picture on the internet where they like lifted up the feathers and he yes. just was little sticks Yes, legs. exactly. I mean, <laughs> it yeah. Surprising. It's surprising. Yeah, and when you feel his body, it's like, oh, 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 there he is, you know, when we're giving him a checkup or something. So yeah, his head is not as big as it seems, but yeah, that is our great horned owl. Screech Owl, which is the third smallest owl species here in San Diego. The reason we don't see these guys as often as we do the great horned owls around here is one, because they like to live in a forest, and two, because they have to spend a lot of their time hiding from and being very aware of predators. So we'll bring him over a little bit closer. Yes, isn't he adorable? He is very blind. <laughs> yes. He was found as an adult um, with injured eyes. <laughs> um, and they have been degenerating ever since. Um, we're not sure how his eyes got injured. Somebody found him. They think he maybe ran into something really hard or got hit by a car maybe. We're not sure, but it was probably something impact. And because he was found as an adult, we don't know how old this guy is. Uh, we'll never really know. And again, with him, we think that he's a boy because of his size, but he could be a tiny little girl. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Tecolote. His name means uh, screech owl in Spanish. So they all have educational names that relate to their species. Uh, but yeah, this is our little owl. His feathers, he is a master at camouflage. If you held him up to the bark of a tree, he would almost disappear. And when they're resting at night, or they don't sleep at night, they're nocturnal. <laughs> when they're resting during the daytime, they will stand their body up tall and straight, stick up those ear tufts, and try and blend in to look like a tree branch. So, yep, you can't very well see them during the day or at night. It looks just like the tree behind you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Are you going to disappear, little guy? Yeah, absolutely. So this little guy likes to eat small things because he's so small. He likes to eat little rodents like mice, but he'll also eat lizards, 
and he likes earthworms, but one of their favorites are crickets because they can find them in the forest because they can hear them. They don't have to be able to see them because they're so tiny and camouflaged. But yes, this is our little western screech owl, Tecalodi. Alrighty, so this is the last owl or the last raptor on our special raptor tour. Do you guys have any questions about any of the birds we've seen today? I have a question. Are those guys sometimes white? Uh, those are barn owls. That's a barn owl. The barn owls are white, uh, very and light. And they're in San Diego as well. Yes, yeah. and in fact, barn owls are the only owls that don't make a hooting sound. They, they don't go, hoo, hoo. They don't make. They screech. They scream. So if you're ever in the forest alone at night and you hear a scream, <laughs> it's probably a barn owl. Or you. Yes. Yep. So these guys, western screech owls, they make a, a nice little high-pitched hooting sound. And it's like a bouncing ball sound. It's like, it kind of like fades out. It's faster and faster. Oh, we heard this again. Yeah. Did you want a closer picture? Yeah. We can get, he's ready for his close up. If you say something. So he does that. That's awesome. Other? They do talk to each other, so that might be territorial, um, and it might be mating. So most raptors mate in the springtime, so it's a little late for them to be doing that. So if you're hearing them at night, uh, they could just be communicating. It could be territorial, like, hey, get out of this town. This is my, this is my town. And he's like, no, I was in this neighborhood first. And you know, just going back I like to think they're just friends. Yeah, yeah, they're just chatting. Hey, no, I don't. I don't think so. So raptors, they're not. They're not social. So they don't like to hang out with each other or us or anything like that. My story was very different. It was mating, and she was talking to him, and he was talking to her. You know, I think I like that better. It's not scientifically accurate, but it's fun. And it's just such a soft It was very soft. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so our little western screech owl, these guys can be found all over the which coast of the United States? West. The west! Yeah, it's very easy. It's right in the name. Yeah, so western screech owls can be found all the way up the west coast um, and on the western side of America. So before I put this little guy back, do we want a picture with this cutie? Did you get a picture? Does anybody want a selfie? Brian got a picture. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Put them on your shoulder like a parrot, right? Yeah, so. I know your program is very new. Yeah. Do you feel like the birds are acclimating and doing really well? I knew you were in the boat on time, but otherwise, but are they ahead of schedule? How are things going? They are actually doing as well as I had expected. You know, all, all four of the birds, they went a whole year without doing any sort of program because of COVID. Um, so they're a little rusty, to say the least. But they're getting back into it. The falcons have totally adapted to the comings and goings of people. Little Blue goes up and says hi to everybody that walks by. <laughs> food, 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 food. Yeah, they're like, oh, he likes me. I'm like, no, he thinks you have a mouse in your purse. But, you know, but yeah, the falcons have definitely acclimated. Um, Solarity was a little bit freaked out in the beginning. Anytime somebody would walk past her habitat, she would kind of fly up to the corner. But now she'll she'll swing in front of them. She'll take a bath in front of anybody. She's just hanging out. And these guys, they just sleep all day anyway. So, you know, for presentations, Tech Lodi, he's great. He's tiny and easy. But who's having, you know, a bit of a hard time? But he's kind of always been a bit of a difficult bird. Can, do you know if he can see? Yes. So he can see a tiny little bit at night, uh, but he can't see it all during the day because his pupils cannot dilate and constrict. Um, so he can't see anything right now. The only reason he knows where I am is because I am talking, and then if you talk, he'll probably look over in that direction. And he's kind of scanning. His head looks like a sprinkler head. He's kind of doing that to see where everything is coming from, to kind of like get an idea of his surroundings because he really can't see anything. Would they do that in or is that, is that a normal thing? That's that something that they would do at night if they heard something and they were trying to figure out where the sound okay. was coming he from. Just does it all the time. He just does it all the time because he just he really What are the hearing even more worse? Yeah, more acute, yeah. Yeah, but at night he can see well enough to find his food and his habitat and move from perch to perch without running into the walls, but... And he seems happy. Yes, he is. He's our sweet, happy little guy. And just adorable. <laughs> He's so cute. I know, seriously. 
is like a little stuffed animal. I kind of want to pet him. He looks I know, I know. I don't think they... I know. It's so cute. He's adorable. Alrighty, so I'm going to bring him back and I will be right back. I will. Uh, 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 Alrighty. <laughs> thank you guys for coming and your support. Yes, you guys did it. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank so you. Go on. Thank you so much for joining us for this raptor tour. It was so awesome to see all four of these birds outside of their habitats. You can come here to our Discovery Center. We're open seven days a week. Monday through Saturday, we are open from 9 a.m. until 4. And on Sundays, we are open from 9 a.m. until noon. And you can come by and see our birds anytime. If you would like a special VIP tour where the birds come out of their habitats and get to greet you, you can book that online at our website at aguahedionda.org.